What's up everybody, Will Reynolds here, founder of Seer Interactive, data geek. Today, I think we're gonna tackle one of the questions that clients always ask, and I don't think any SEOs are answering really, really well. And if you are, share your stuff. We can learn from each other. I'm sharing mine, you share yours. And that question is, how much content do I need to write to rank for these damn words that I wanna win on on Google? I think sometimes as SEOs, we deliver, or content marketers, we deliver these kind of long content roadmaps to clients. And some people can execute on them. But let's be honest, most times when I deliver to a client, here's 100 pieces of content you can write, six months later, they maybe only got to 10 of them. So I think what we need to do is be more agile in our approaches so we're able to show clients and kind of cut through what they need to produce and how much revenue could come from producing that content. That's the other thing I think that search professionals and content marketers are really bad at. We still use monthly search volume and then we march our clients up to talk to their managers and their bosses for budget with monthly search volume. Whereas every other marketer is coming with, here's how much money I can make you. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about how to cut through hundreds of thousands of unique pieces of content, find out whether if your client can only produce one or two or 200, I'll show you how to use one file to be able to be agile with your client. So, let's go do it. But before we get started, I wanna remind all of you, I have produced tons of videos on how to join your data. Go back to the first Power BI video I recorded 18 or so months ago, because I'm assuming you've already watched that or you can't do this cool stuff here. Okay, so in this visual, what I'm showing you first is the number of keywords we analyzed. You can see here that we're looking at 266,000 unique keywords. And for those keywords, we did pull the top 20 for each one of them. Big data set. You can see that we've got 171,000 conversions on these keywords out of paid, so we know exactly which words are and aren't converting. You also see my spend on those words as well. The thing I really wanna show you is we are looking at 188,000 unique domains that are ranking for these 266,000 words. So we don't ask our clients, who are your top five competitors anymore? Why? Because we are looking at 188,000 and can show them competitors they've never seen or thought of in the past. And yes, like I mentioned before, we are literally looking at 877,000 unique pieces of content to figure out where our clients should focus. So in this visual, what I've done is you can see right here, I slid my competitor rank from 20 to five, right? And when I did that, my whole visual changes. So you can see, if you look at my axes here, on this axis, my left, uh, my Y axis, it's number of conversions. On my X axis, it's how many unique URLs. So what I'm able to see here are which domains have produced the fewest pieces of content to get the most conversions. That helps me to focus my client. So if they say I can only produce one or 10 or 20, this visual literally helps me to do that. And the only thing I had to do was slide that little competitor rank in the bottom right. Now, what I haven't talked about yet that you're seeing here is I have my list of all those 227,000 URLs. Yep, they're all listed here in the lower left. I can see how many unique keywords that URL is able to rank for and how many conversions my client got on those keywords according to paid. So here you can see on this third row here, third row here, you can see that there's a URL that ranks for 6,248 unique words that drove 90,000 conversions for my client. Now obviously it's probably a branded word or something like that, but I just wanna show you and ground you on the data. Then I can click on that URL and then I can see on the right hand side what client URLs are showing up for those same keywords. And you can see that that person's consolidated into one page, a bunch of words, that my client has tons and tons and tons and tons of pages that are ranking somewhere in the top 105. Okay, so let's keep on moving to the story I originally wanted to tell. Got on a little bit of a tangent there. So we know that that's still way too much data to look at though. I found those few in the top right, but it's still too much data for some clients. Like, hey, okay, well, that's still hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of keywords. How do you help to trim this down? So wouldn't it make sense for me to say, let me only show the keywords where you're not on the first page of Google. And remember, this is just a slider, folks. And this is where your knowledge of your client is really freaking important. 
because in some industries like that I've been in that are really competitive, like free website stuff, if you're not in the top three or four, your conversions fall off of a cliff because there's low risk. Whereas if you're working for a client in a healthcare space or in an enterprise software space where they gotta make a case, people typically go a lot longer through those search results based on the data that we see when we look at click-through rate curves out of our GSC data. So now what you're looking at here is a visual that shows only where we're not on the first page. So now I can really say to my client, hey, you know, I have found that there's a bunch of money we've spent We've got a lot of conversions on words where certain groups of competitors are able to rank in the top five and we're not anywhere in the top 10. Now keep in mind, there's gonna be a lot of caveats to this. If your client goes after a lot of competitor names, of course you don't rank in the top 10 for a competitor name. So there's some caveats here, but you'll figure all this out because you're smart people. You're watching this video. You're way ahead of everybody else. You got that figured out. And now what I'm here to show you is, notice that I've taken my conversions and slid it into 10. So all I did was slide, slide, slide right so let me go ahead and put that back to 10 so I can focus in so now I'm looking at the bigger type of keywords that have driven a lot of conversions and booyah so what I can see here instantly is that this domain over here and this domain over here they're both ranking for uh, a lot of words that produce a lot of conversions for my client but one has only produced 14 pages and one had to produce 36 pages why would you want to produce extra pages you don't need to? Now, of course, again, gotta put on your thinking cap here. It could be like a Wikipedia page or a big brand that's able to rank for a lot of words because of the size of their brand. There's a lot of reasons why those pages might be there. But what I was able to do for this client was drill in on one page specifically. So this is how we're gonna start talking to clients when we say, so if you only have time to produce one or two or three pages of content, let me show you the one piece of content where you don't rank anywhere in the top 10, which means you have no visibility, where a competitor is in the top five or top three or whatever you wanna slide it on over to, where you're getting a bunch of conversions and spending real money. So for this client and this one site I found over here, w.com, client never mentioned them as a competitor. Right? And what I'm able to show that client is w.com down here in my lower left, they only have one URL that got them 57 keywords ranked in the top five, and those 57 keywords drove 2,400 conversions. So now if my client says, man, well, I only got time to produce one piece of content, I know the URL sitting over there that they should produce to potentially get in front of 2,400 conversions. And the other thing you have to get really strategic about when you're talking to your client is to say, well, wait a second, you just spent $240,000 to show up for these 59 keywords. How can I not get $5,000 of that to produce a piece of content to maybe get a chance to rank in the top five, which we just proved it's possible to rank for 57 words in the top five and they're doing it. How can I not get five or $10,000 to write that really, really good piece of content that could get us some of those clicks, traffic, and conversions for free? Um, there's a couple gotchas with this. One, watch the snippets. So um, if you look at the report from SparkToro, uh, where Rand did an analysis on zero click searches, we'll link to it in the description. It is super important for you to realize that a lot of times snippets, even if you start ranking, are gonna take away some of the clicks, they might be giving people the answer. So if you're doing this analysis and you bring in all your top 20 rankings, you should also be bringing in snippets sometimes. So then you can say, only show me terms where there's no snippet, which means you're probably gonna get a higher set of clicks as a result of a snippet not existing there. So that's one of the caveats. One of my other tips is pick on brands smaller than you. If you go and say, well, IBM's able to rank for this, it's because they're freaking IBM. Don't typically pick people bigger than you because you're not gonna learn anything because what you might learn is they're a bigger brand than me and Google's giving them a little bit more push in the SERPs. You can't do anything with that. It's when you find these smaller little competitors who are beating you out, who don't have your, your brand authority, who are beating you out, that's the people that you wanna look at. So that's another one of the caveats there. And my last one is I got no link data in my data warehouse yet. We're working on it. We're working on it. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. But Without link data, what you may not realize is maybe that one piece of content is getting a ton of links. Maybe it's got a bunch of internal links. So to me, if a, if a company that's smaller, and I've worked with smaller clients and larger clients, the smaller clients, I'll say this really good piece of content, you're gonna need to link it directly from your homepage so that it can rank because you don't have the domain power that an IBM can uh, put it six levels down and still rank. So those are some things to also think about when you're doing this. 
Don't just blindly look at the data, put on your thinking cap, and let me know in the comments if there's other gotchas, because we want to make sure that everybody gets a little bit stronger at this. So, I hope you all watch my first video. Please, watch the first video, learn how to join your stuff together. Once you learn how to join all your stuff, joins, right? I'm a nerd now. Once you learn how to join all your data together, you will be able to do this across thousands of pieces of content, all the way down to the client who goes, I only have five hours today. I need to know what piece of content I need to write. Well, here it is. We just found it for this one client in seconds. Can't wait to see you guys on more videos. Take care, leave your questions in the freaking comments. I will answer all of them or our team will. And please give us a thumbs up or subscribe to our channel if you think this kind of stuff is helpful for you as an SEO or a content marketer.